Corporate governance is, is in the news today. What's, what's going on? Trouble inside some big companies. <laughs> Chesapeake Energy, which has made plenty of headlines lately over this sweetheart deal that their chairman and CEO, Aubrey McClendon, gets, where he's allowed to invest in every well the company drills. And there were some questionable uh, dealings in terms of loans he was taking out and what they were you know, against and things like that. Today, Chesapeake announced that not only are they going to end that program 18 months before it was scheduled to end, they're also going to remove McClendon from the chairman role. He'll still continue as CEO, but the company said they're going to, you know, conduct a search for a new chairman, split those roles, which, you know, we're hearing a lot of that lately. A lot of companies are either being urged to consider that by shareholders. In this case, it was a shareholder that urged them to do so, or, you know, doing it on their own. That was just one of the things we heard. We've also heard, you know, of late that Groupon has had a shakeup on their board. Uh, Howard Schultz, the CEO of Starbucks, is leaving the Groupon board along with another member of the board. The two folks coming into the board are uh, CFO of American Express and a uh, vice chairman of Deloitte. So a company that certainly had some accounting issues, uh, some questions about their financial reporting, uh, seems to be beefing up that aspect of their board. Auto sales came in this morning. Uh, how are they looking? Well, they were down, at least for GM and Ford. Chrysler reported a big jump, but Chrysler was in worse shape than the two of them, so they're going off lower numbers. Uh, but Chrysler sales were up 20%. GM and Ford were down 8% and 5% respectively. There were three fewer selling days in April, though, so no one seems to be taking this as any kind of signal that you know the auto industry is running out of gas. GM, in fact, up its forecast for industry-wide sales for the entire year to between 14 and 14 and a half million. Which you know, at that level, these automakers can certainly be profitable. Whereas a few years back, they needed 15, 16, or more to have a chance at cracking a profit. So, you know. Not a great month because of the fewer selling days, but certainly no reason to panic in the auto market. Is there an impact on Sirius XM because they seem to be fairly well tied to the auto industry? Well, yes, yeah, Sirius is very closely tied to the auto industry. Uh, you know, they make sure to say in their reporting that it's not the be-all end-all for them, but it's a big part of their business. And uh, they mentioned today in their quarterly report that, you know, profits were up, revenue was up, and they upped their forecast for full-year subscriber growth. All good things, all benefiting from the fact that, you know, the more cars that are sold in this country and abroad, you know, the more uh, cars they can put their satellite radios into. So good things for Sirius in these auto sales as they, you know, improve even with a little bit of a headwind in April.